Have you ever wondered why it's taking Jesus so long to return? I mean, he promised he would. Does the Bible say anything about this? It does. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Uh, it talks about how the day of the Lord will come like a thief, like we won't know when it's coming. But the reason why it's taking so long or the reason why God tarries and waits to come back is because he desires for all to get to know him. He wants your friends, your neighbors, for you to be repentant and follow him, to be in relationship, right relationship with him through Jesus. And so he waits. He uh, tarries, we say through many, many songs and hymns, that he waits for uh, us to get to know him. I want to read you a verse and, and want you to meditate on this verse today. These the set of verses from 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. These verses uh, will, I, I hope, um, help us remember that he has made us new and wants to make others new just in that same way. Uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You're a new creation today. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. There is so much here for us to remember that we are reconciled to God, that he took us from death to life. He took us from what was old and, and broken and um, needing rescue and uh, fixing. He took us and he made us whole. He made us a new creation. He made us right with God. This ministry of reconciliation is not just something that we can keep for ourselves, but it's actually something that we should take to our neighbors and friends. God, uses us as vessels of grace so that we can be his light in the world. He says that he's entrusting to us the message of re reconciliation. He's done it for you, and he wants to show others what he can do for them through you by you sharing your story with them. It's an amazing truth. So today, launch into a time of prayer, maybe to spend five or 10 minutes, maybe longer if you have the time, in prayer with God thanking him for making you a new creation through Jesus. He's done that work in you, and we need to thank him for that new life. But then also pray that you can gain his heart for your neighbors and your co-workers, your friends, your family members who are far from God. Ask for an opportunity to, to be that messenger of reconciliation I mean, just pray that God would open up an opportunity, open their hearts to hear about your story, the hope that you have found in Jesus because he has saved you and made you new. Let me pray for you and launch you into that time. Lord, I pray that you would guide each of my friends as they watch this, um, as they jump into a time of prayer with you, would you meet with them, remind them of how they've been made into a new creation because of Jesus. Would you give them eyes to see the people around them as you see them with love and grace? Even the ones that might creep them out a little bit, Lord, would you give them an, an opportunity to share your good news, the gospel message of Jesus, how you brought us from death to life. You brought us from sin and shame to freedom and righteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for that work in our lives. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Peace, friends.